Hello everybody, this is Takedown Wrestling and I Russell. I'm Tony Higger and I'm joined by Nolan Hellickson, Southeast Polk, uh, headed to Harvard. How we doing? Good, how are you? Good. How's uh now that the, the season's over for you as a Southeast Polk wrestler, you know, are you now considering yourself a Harvard wrestler? Uh kind of. Not not really. I still go to school at Southeast Polk and see all my teammates and uh, I mean, I'm still in the Southeast Polk room uh, twice a week, so still black, still black and gold for a little bit longer. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so we're uh, you're in the Nike hot seat here, and we're talking the 2015 Dream Team Classic coming back to Iowa this Saturday by U- Wrestling USC, USA Cliff Clean uh, Athletic. This uh, this duel seems to you know when I'm looking at all the rankings and the matchups, this seems like a a duel that Iowa may have a shot at you know getting some good wins in. It hasn't happened very often that Iowa has beaten Team USA. Have you had a, uh, some time to talk with some of the other competitors that are going to be at the Dream Team on Saturday? Uh, a little bit, and um kind of the vibe I'm getting is everyone's pretty excited just for the event and to compete against some of the nation's best. And, uh, you know, I think that everyone just approaches their individual match. You don't really think about the team score too much um, until kind of gets down to it. So you're going to be – you have another teammate from Southeast Polk, Jake Martin. He's number three in the nation. You're number ten. Was uh was there other Southeast Polk kids that were asked to be on this team, or was do you know if Jake was the only kid that was asked? Uh, well, I know that Aaron Meyer is now competing in it too because I don't think Freddie is okay going. So, but that's all I'm aware of. Yeah, Freddie had surgery today, so we'll have three Southeast Polk wrestlers being represented, uh, state. 3A uh, state champions and um, you know as you prepare for this event has it been something that you've just you know you're in the room two times a week have you kind of ramped up that regimen here the last couple of weeks getting ready for the event uh, you know I, I, I'm in the southeast polk room twice a week but I also work out at Ibasa and um, you know at Grandview some and uh, I don't know I I didn't really take too much time off. I'm, I've been up and at it pretty much since the week after state. So, uh, so your I, shape won't be an issue, is what you're saying? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes in these all star events, you know, you see kids that have just kind of taken time off, and there's been ones that you can tell that did not, and we've seen that through a few all star meets. And I, I believe this is the first one that you've done this uh, since the season's been over. Were you at the North South? I was at North South. That's what I thought. Yeah. You picked and you picked up a win there, correct? Mm-hmm. And what what are the difference between being a part of the North South and this event to you? Uh, I think that this event is a lot bigger and it's going to bring a lot bigger of a crowd. Um, also, the competition is just at a whole nother level. You're not going up against a good kid from Iowa. You're going up against one of the best in the country. So, um, you know, the bar's raised, and I guess it's up to the guys on Team Iowa to meet that level. So you're going to be taking on number six, Eli Seeple, I believe that's how it's pronounced, from St. Paris Graham, another uh, powerhouse high school team, uh, Southeast Polk. Have you guys had a chance to to see St. Paris Graham at all? I know you guys travel all over the place, but has, Saint, has Graham been there at all? Nope, not at all. Have you? So this matchup, have you been able to prepare for him, watching you know video on numerous you know websites and video for him? Uh, I watched a little bit just to see kind of his what he kind of does um, and small things, but. For the most part, my goal is just to stick to my stuff and get to my offense, and if that happens, I think that I'll come out on top. What have you been working on since the state wrestling tournament? You finally got that you know, that state title that you've been working so hard for for how many years? 
much. Mm -hmm. What uh, yeah. have you changed anything since then, or, or working on towards now going to the college level? I mean, right now I'm kind of in that weird transition time between folk style and freestyle. So a lot of the practices I've been going to are freestyle, but I still have this folk style event. Um, but overall, I think some of the big things is that'll translate to college well is like finishing quick, um, hand fighting, because that's something that is just uh, high school compared to college. It doesn't coincide. So those two, um, and really just chaining things together and, uh, you know, just working on things that will help me at the next level. And if I work on that stuff, then I'm just going to keep getting better. You have great experience on in freestyle during the summers. Do you feel like you are a stronger freestyle competitor or folk style competitor? Uh, I don't really know, actually. Which one do you like better? I think freestyle is easier to enjoy just because it's a little bit more laid back and more of a fun environment. Uh, not that folk style isn't, but, um, you know, both have their advantages and disadvantages, but I couldn't really say. Do you think, and I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here of why that may be is a more relaxed feel because at any given time, you can get five points, four points, pretty mm -hmm. easy but in folk style if you're down five points it's no coming back from that and a lot of the matches when you're wrestling top uh, athletes in the nation do you think that could be a, a reason why it's more laid back uh i don't know about that but i think some of it's just the mentality you have going into it it's it's a little bit different versus wrestling folk style year round um you know gives you some it's almost like wrestling, doing a whole different sport, you know, kind of reinvigorates you. So I think that's most of it, to be honest. So you're not just grinding, doing the same exact things all year round, but everything's helping your folk style still. With the new rules in international wrestling, do these help your style, do you feel? I think so. Um, you know, I like to wrestle a full match and... Um, I think that, you know, it plays to my advantage because I don't really like to just hang out during my matches and just try to get that last second score. So, well, you're very great from your feet. So being able to get an extra point from takedowns, yeah. I would assume has, has helped your, you know, your quest for international success down the road. Is that something that you have in mind once you know you're done at Harvard to continue to wrestle? Uh, I'm not really sure right now. I think that I'll make that decision when the time comes, but I'm open to it for sure. Did you have a, an opportunity to watch Aegon this past weekend? Yeah, I, I did go up. You did go up. What was your overall experience since you were actually there the overall feel of how the event went how it was perceived to you for me i was on the broadcast so i got a completely different view or mm -hmm. i was really busy i didn't get to watch the action as much as i wanted to or see what was going around me but did you did you like the atmosphere yeah it was awesome i mean the matches were amazing and i mean guys are just throwing it all out on the line um if i had to be like a critic i would say uh some of, the, some of the interruptions were a little bit long and uh, I think maybe focus a little bit more on the actual wrestling. Uh, I think some of the outside factors can distract people um, and I guess the uh, background music, that was a little annoying, but <laughs> other than that, other than that, it was an awesome event and I mean, Tony Ramos's match, that was, that was quite the match could not believe he pulled that off yeah i mean that just kind of brought the whole place alive yeah. i mean not that it wasn't from the prior match for mcdonough beating escobedo but you just you kind of could just feel that anticipation that something was going to happen and uh wow i haven't been i have never been a part of something like that were you were you a part of it when he uh that happened at carver when he beat uh, uh who the heck did he beat was it Jordan Oliver that he beat? 
in the last coming seconds, I think, to, I don't know, double rainbows is what I'm blanking on the match, but have you been a part of a, an event where the whole crowd, literally just everyone was cheering and going crazy? Uh, not that I remember. Southeast Polk has, has a, I coached at Johnson, I had opportunity multiple times to go to Southeast Polk's crowd. What has made that crowd so uh, so passionate? It's so hard to get people to wrestling events sometimes that aren't actual wrestling fans, but it seems like Southeast Polk does a really good job of getting not your average wrestling fan to the <laughs> meet, and I mean like kids, you know, basketball players or football players that just are there to support the wrestling team. Is that just because your guys' success or is that instilled in the school? I don't, I don't think so because, I mean, he talks to some other kids from top-level schools and they still don't have exactly what we have. I think a lot of it's the community and the support we get from parents, uh, other students. Um, you know, it's like a family-like environment, so people just are attracted to it, plus our meets are pretty exciting. And I think one kind of interesting fact is a few years ago, we had more people at one of our duels than in the NCAA national duel finals. I think it was like two years ago, which wow. is, it's pretty crazy to think that. So, Well, whoever's doing the marketing at Southeast Polk <laughs> maybe uh, needs to take somebody else's job. <laughs> if, they're, uh, if they're out doing uh, a level of NCAA level, that, uh, that is very impressive. You know, going back to this event, so many big names from Iowa being a part of it. What matchup or who are you most excited to see wrestle one more time under that Iowa tag is wrestling wrestling for Iowa? Uh, geez, I haven't really looked at too many of the other matchups, but... You know, some of the big names, you have Jacob Schwarm, uh, yep. Max Thompson, four-timer, uh, Bryce Dyer... <laughs> Waverly Shell Rock. These are some big names that are probably mm -hmm. going to be doing some big things in Division One. You have you have you bonded with these wrestlers over the years going to all these tournaments, or somebody that's you're real close to you? Definitely. I mean, you like Fargo Junior Duels, all that stuff. You're with all those guys, um, and I've become pretty good friends with a lot of them. Uh, but as far as watching one of them compete one more time. I would say, I don't know, I think Steyer's pretty fun to watch usually, so. He uh, had a pretty amazing match against uh, Dayton Racer at the state finals. Yeah. That will be something a lot of fans won't remember when he beat him. And uh, some, some good words for Dayton after uh, after that, saying, you know, this is an Iowa medal. And that kind of brings up a point with – some of these powerhouse high schools, kids coming in from out of state. Do you think that's good for wrestling where, you know, okay, like a, a school like Southeast Polk or Bettendorf and some of these 2A schools that can maybe get these kids that move in because they want to be a part of a program, be under the coaches that you guys have. Do you think that is something that more schools should be doing or – be basically creating that club or that that program to where they can get kids that want to come wrestle for them. I don't, I don't really think the the number one goal is to be able to get kids to move in, but uh, that's kind of a byproduct of you know having a good program, good coaches, and a good atmosphere. So I mean, if you if that translates to getting kids move in, then yeah. It's almost like if you build it, they will come. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, who would, who wouldn't want to wrestle for Coach Christensen or uh, Coach Knight if you're from Iowa? So, so um, this event next Saturday uh, again, it's going to be the USA Wrestling USA Cliff Keen Athletic 2015 Dream Team Classic, Independence, Iowa. You can uh, get tickets on the predicament.com, and you can also buy the tickets at the event. We encourage everyone to go there and support this event. We need more events like this in Iowa. It's at 6 o'clock Saturday night. We hope to see you there. And uh, for everybody on Takedown Russell, IA Russell, we wish you the best of luck.
at this event and uh, you know the, the coming years at Harvard. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Nolan.